In this video series on XSD, we have been using a definition document that describes XML to create both an XML document and also the XSD, which validates or sets the rules for this XML document. Let's continue in this video. We are going to look at begin bloom date, end bloom date, edible. Uh, we're going to look at these three elements now because they're different data types. So begin bloom date, end bloom date are both date. Uh, edible is Boolean, which indicates are there edible parts. We will also take a look at the default value option. So let's start with default. Default is a pretty easy one. For default, for height, I can say default equals double quote, zero, close double quote. And that simply means that if this parameter is not passed, I'm sorry, if this element is not passed in XML, we're going to assume it has a default of zero. We can do a similar thing for species. Uh, default species, SPP, that's commonly used to indicate a species unknown or a hybrid where species doesn't apply. So species, because it has min occurs, that means it's not required. Uh, so yeah, why don't we put a default on there? On the other hand, if something's required, we wouldn't need a default because guess what? It's required. So that takes care of our default values. Now let's look at begin bloom date and end bloom date. So these are going to be dates in year-month-day format. So I will say xs colon element, and then we'll say name equals, I believe we said begin bloom date. Let me just verify that if I may. Uh, begin, yeah, okay, we did it with underscores there. That's fine, begin underscore bloom underscore date, like so. Uh, close off with our double quote. And actually we'll make this one simple. We'll say type equals xs colon date. Okay, again, include, include that in double quotes. Then we'll make a new line for in bloom date because these two are going to be very similar. So begin bloom date, in bloom date. We save and now let's go over and just as it is with the defaults and with those two new tags, let's make sure that our document still validates. Okay. Uh, missing child elements. Okay, so it says, well, gosh, uh, you don't have in bloom date or you don't have begin bloom date. That's because I haven't marked this as optional. So let's go ahead and add the min occurs on each of these. There we go. Which in min occurs zero indicates that uh, it, it is optional. In other words, zero of these elements are acceptable. If I said min occurs equals one, that would mean it's mandatory. Uh, I can also set a max occurs which would be common if we had like a repeating list. Uh, but that's okay, let's go ahead and save it as so. Let's go back validate one more time. Okay, and we see that now that we've marked uh, begin bloom date and end bloom date, now that we've marked those as optional, uh, it does validate and adding the default equals zero didn't change our story, we're good. So I'm going to copy this name begin bloom date. Let's go ahead and make an element out of that. So begin bloom date, and we'll say we need to do year, month, day. So we'll say 2017 uh, dash, well, what's a good bloom date? Uh, March, so we'll say 05. And then we'll say maybe March 15th would be a good begin bloom date. Okay, so notice year, month, day format. Uh, what's the end bloom date? Oh, I said March, I put in May, didn't I? That's okay, we'll stick with May. The end bloom date, let's say March 25th. Um, actually for a red bud, those do bloom early, so just, to satisfy myself, I'm going to change it to March. Save, and let's make sure that this validates. Okay, uh, begin bloom date uh, expected is, oh, okay, you know what, I'm sorry. User error, end, and see, that's why we like validation because humans make mistakes and I'm human. So let's save, let's validate one more time. Kind of a fun check there to make sure it actually works. And we see, sure enough, it is valid. Now, what if I put in something that just didn't make sense? What if I put 217 instead of 2017? Let's go ahead and validate this one again. Okay. Um, it doesn't like it because it says, gosh, that's not a four digit year. That feels kind of funny. Similarly, if I just put in, you know, complete garbage, like foobar, something like that, and then do a validation. Okay. Yeah, it doesn't like it because bar is not a valid date of type excess date. It has to be four digit year, 2017, a two digit month, 03, and then a two digit day, 30. One more time, just let's make sure that it validates and we're good. 
Okay, so we've covered a couple items. We still need to get to our Boolean type, which is edible. So does the plant contain edible parts? Uh, for that, we go back to our XSD, and we said this is going to be called edible, okay? So we go back to our XSD, and I say XS colon element name equals edible. Okay, uh, oops, I didn't want to terminate it that fast, just a moment. Name equals edible. And then we'll say type equals XS Boolean. Okay, and then terminate the tag like so. Save, go back to our XML. Let's make sure it still validates. Okay, uh, I keep making the same mistake, don't I? I need to add that min occurs, so we remember that it's optional. That's an easy fix, isn't it? So min occurs equals zero. In this case, we're saying edible is optional. Um, Edible? What does that mean? We don't always know what plants are edible versus which ones are toxic or which parts are edible. We're not going to bother with making that mandatory because we can have a plant without knowing its edible nature. So one more validation. Validation looks good now that we've marked edible as optional. Let's go ahead and add an edible. Uh, so Eastern Redbud. Edible? True. One th there, the Eastern Redbud, which is native to Cincinnati, just a little side note on this. Uh, one of my favorite trees in the Ohio Valley area uh, because, first of all, it's a legume, which means it can assimilate nitrogen from the atmosphere and uh, does not require as much fertilizer as traditional plants. Another thing I like about the red bud is it has edible flowers, and it, it is a prolific bloomer when it does bloom. Uh, so you can really freak somebody out if you're certain it's a red bud tree, and for by all means, make sure it's an edible red bud tree. You can go up, grab a bunch of flowers, and eat them uh, right off the tree. Tastes delicious. So edible true. Well, I do have edible flowers. And let's go ahead and uh, validate. XML schema is valid. Now, what if I said something else here like foobar? Okay, so we save. Do one more validation. Okay, and you see it doesn't like foobar because foobar is not true or false. For a Boolean type, we have to be true or we have to be false. So that takes care of, of our uh, begin bloom date, end bloom date, edible, and also our default values. In the next video, we're going to take a look at how to do an enumeration. An enumeration is interesting because in an enumeration, uh, what we can do is we can give a predefined list of acceptable values. Definitely a very customizable type. I look forward to seeing you then. Thank you.